in this episode of Mind Pump. Boop. So in this episode, um, this is our Qua episode. This is where we answer uh, fan questions. So These people, are my favorite episodes, Sal. People go on our Instagram page, Mind Pump Media, and they ask us questions about fitness or whatever else. We pick them. And then we answer them on this episode. But what we also do is we open the episode with the intro portion. This is where we talk about current events. We talk about our sponsors and partners. And we talk about awesome articles in science regarding fitness, health, or technology, or other stuff that's interesting to us. Here's what we talked about in the first 34 minutes, which is the intro portion. I started by talking about photobiomodulation. This is like light therapy. So you, if you've seen those red light uh, companies that sell the red light therapy. Our favorite, by the way, is Juve. Um, and they do everything from treat uh, skin issues, uh, decrease wrinkle, wrinkles, might even actually speed boost up your metabolism. Testosterone. Yeah, boost testosterone. That might actually do that. There's some studies that show that that might actually happen. Improve recovery. Well, this study shows that it might actually treat brain uh, issues. So shining this on your head, uh, some of it actually gets to the brain. I'm not making this up. Mm. The article was published in Science Daily. It's in the show notes. Uh, by the way, our sponsor, Juve, is, in our opinion, the best company to get red light therapy that there is. It's the highest quality, and that's what you want. You want high quality. There's hope for Adam, Sal. Here's how you get the MAPS hookup, or excuse me, the Mind Pump hookup. Go to juve.com, that's J-O-O-V-V.com forward slash Mind Pump, and if you buy one of their lights and it's $500 or more, you'll get free shipping and a free MAPS Prime program. Then we talked about the show on Netflix, Unnatural Selection. This is a CRISPR technology. I don't know that people are doing some yeah, weird stuff. Except done really badly. In their garages with uh, animals. Kind of weird. Uh, then we talked about uh, Kai Green talking about how he might go plant-based to improve his health because, you know, he's so concerned about It's going to make health. a massive difference, <laughs> Sal. We talked about James Cameron, the producer of Game Changers, and uh, this might be a, a conflict of interest, but apparently he's invested like a hundred something million dollars in a vegan protein powder company. Weird. That's weird. I talked about a stalker in Japan who found his subject by looking at the her pupils and her pictures and looking at the reflections. Stalker level five thousand. That's creepy. Then Adam brought up a fight at McDonald's. Then we started telling all kinds of crazy stories. Uh, Adam knows way too much about strip clubs. You'll find out in that part of this episode. <laughs> he does. Uh, and we talked about how Cosby, Bill Cosby, the evil person, um, got like three to ten years in jail. He got off easy. <laughs> then we got into the fitness portion of the episode. Weak. Here are the fitness questions that we answered. The first question, this person wants to know what we think of daily undulation. So the, what they're referring to is changing your workouts every day versus sticking to one for like three or four weeks at a time. So what are the benefits or what are the detriments? Next question this person says, hey, look, I know I'm supposed to keep my feet and knees straight when I squat, but I like to turn them out a little bit. It feels more comfortable. What's the deal? Uh, is that bad or good? So we Turn have nice, out for what? We have a nice discussion uh, in that part of the episode. Next question, this person says, you know, I'm, I'm overtraining uh, and I want to lower the volume. Should I reduce the volume on my big lifts or my small lifts? What is going to make the biggest impact? Uh, how do you weigh that out? And the final question this person wants to know what the difference is between having a good relationship to food and having a bad relationship to food. So we talk about that in that part of the episode. My fruit is bruised. Also, this month, MAPS Anabolic is 50% off. So this is our most popular fitness program. So what comes with this program? Workout videos where we're demonstrating the exercises, blueprints telling you how many reps to do, what the exercises are. It's phased out for you, and you do this uh, over the course of like 12 weeks. So it's a full program. It's our most popular program. It's great for building muscle, boosting metabolism. Um, it's an awesome program. Anyway, it's half off, 50% off. Here's how you get the discount. You go to mapsred.com, M-A-P-S-R-E-D.com, and use the code RED50, R-E-D-5-0, no space, for the discount. Go buy it. I was thinking the other day that uh, I was like, why does Adam seem smarter to me? <laughs> you know? Like, like, why? Yeah, like, why, I was like, like, I was like what's... Uh, so weird. Yeah, he was saying stuff, and I was like, that's pretty sharp. <sighs> pretty brilliant. Something different has been happening here. Yeah. And uh, then I read this study that was published mm, by Science... earthquake weather. What? I don't know. 
<laughs> this was random. <laughs> Why would you say that? Because <laughs> it's like a random natural disaster is on its way. And that, and that makes Adam smarter. <laughs> yes. Is that like when your like when your old aunt is like my corns are swollen? Yeah, exactly. Like you feel like things in nature <laughs> so, about to happen. So when Adam's <laughs> like, not, when, when things don't line up. So when Adam's not smart, shit's safe. Like oh we're yeah, good. like everything's fine and nothing happening. Uh, yeah, there's nothing impending. No, no impending doom. No, man. I'm like man, he's he's getting sharpish. What's going on here? <laughs> 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 I got this article. This yeah. but this was be you coming after me from all the nerd stuff that we had. No, 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 not at all. So then I read this article from Science Direct. I'll make sure to put it uh, in the show notes. By the way, all of our podcasts have show notes, so you can go to mindpumppodcast.com or use our free Mind Pump Media app, yeah. and then you can see all the links and stuff. And you know, people always ask where you get these studies or whatever. Anyway, so I'm like racking my. I'm like, what's going? He's getting sharper. I got to up my game and then I read this article makes all, all the sense in the world science direct published this paper called shining light on the head okay photo biomodulation for brain disorders <laughs> so true about this so, <laughs> that red so light wait, 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 wait. hey that red that's light a backhanded therapy. compliment right yeah. you say he's got a brain disorder <laughs> no 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 that's not what I'm <laughs> that's trying to say works. Yeah. I'm not trying to say that but this this article says that okay so near infrared light uh, or uh, near light, I should say, um, like the one you get from the juve light that yeah. you've been shining on your head. I do. You've been using it for your hair loss and for psoriasis, right. which is working right. for that. Yeah. But did you know that it can penetrate the head and reach the brain? Fucking A. What? Yes, and so it's absorbed by the uh, cytochrome C oxidase in mitochondria. So that's basically, it gets the mitochondria to produce more energy. This is why it makes skin heal faster and all that stuff. But they're saying that it increases blood flow, energy, neuroprotection, less inflammation, brain repair. And according to this paper, I'm not making this up. Please go to the show notes. It sounds crazy, but it's <laughs> true. That it can potentially treat traumatic, neurodegenerative, and psychiatric diseases. So it's good for the brain. Wow. And they may be used for treating things like Alzheimer's, dementia, and that kind of stuff. And they say to shine it on the forehead because there's less hair and it's easier to penetrate. But you're... you're there's none anywhere. Yeah. So we, we were so skeptical about this science. Dude. Right? When we first were talking Bro. to Jew, because it's like it literally sounds like like medieval magic. Like I'm gonna <laughs> shine this light on you and yeah, you're gonna dude. get all these amazing health benefits to it. Yeah. <laughs> Especially okay, it's gonna help your skin. What? So that's kind of like, okay, well, I could see that. It's gonna help grow hair grow back. Oh, no, all right, let me let me look at the study and they're like, helps your brain. Shut up. No, science direct. Says that it goes through the fucking Fire. skull. Fire. How I, crazy is that? Boom. I knew I was onto something. Damn. Yeah. Ph photo myomodulation for the brain. It, you want to, you know, talking about other crazy stuff. Have you guys seen the new Netflix series? I had a couple people uh, DM me and I was like, whenever I get multiple people sending me DMs about a specific series, I'll normally go watch it. Uh, and this one people have been telling me about, it's called Unnatural Selection. Mm -hmm. Oh, everybody's been posted uh, tagging. Yeah, me. I watched a little bit of it, but that didn't make it all the way through. It's, the, it's about CRISPR, right? Yeah, the gene modification and scared the hell out of me, dude. It's crazy. It's really crazy. So what and, is it saying? Well, it's it's not saying anything new that I don't think that we've ever brought up because I think Justin brought up CRISPR technology a long time ago, didn't you? Bring yeah. that up? He was, was talking you? about no. He was talking about something else. He was talking about crispy technology for the chips yeah, that he was eating. No, like, no, this no. no. One of you guys brought up crispy chicken. chicken. It was me. It was, I was going to say was somebody me. brought it up, and I remember not knowing what it was, and so I, I I didn't know about it. Justin, it was you who brought it up. Yeah, yeah. So have you seen this at all? Yeah. Oh, no, the the fucking doc. The doc yeah, yeah. Like I saw a little bit of it. I know that they're doing like. Um, you know, at home, like sort of uh, right. like alchemy, basically, of, of genetic uh, editing and whatnot. Because you can literally Dude, go in and change the gene, There's right? people that are taking, like, uh, fireflies, and they're breeding them. In, it's, they're, they're taking the DNA, and they're breeding it or whatever it, with the, uh, like a rat, and then the rat glows. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Dude, Fuck it, it's crazy. That's messed up. You know, and this guy's doing it with dogs right now. Well, I know they did that too with with jellyfish, and they they, yes. they took that and, and they they put it into like certain other kinds of fish to make them glow, and, and they would sell it because it was like you know a novelty. Like you're going in there to buy a goldfish, but it's like a fluorescent goldfish is is way cooler. Yes. What? Am I the only one? Is there? Are these people not? Did they not read comic books and sci-fi yeah. movies? And yeah. You, yeah, we're not supposed to play God. So the scariest part about this to me was 
uh, you know, because originally I think when I heard you talk about it, I think like, well, you know, this is in some lab and you got to be some crazy scientist to be able to figure this out. And this technology is beyond the average person. Well, these, these like biohackers at home. Yes, you've got these yes. biohackers. Some of these guys without even degrees or anything that have just researched and learned, figured it out. Terrible and, idea. And guys sharing kits online and selling them. And, and we got to ask Bishop Barron about this. Dude. I'd like to know what his opinion is on people editing genes and shit. Like, think about it? the different species they're going to create and like different things like they're going to let loose into the environment that we have no fucking idea. Like, I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's, I'm extremely mutant things. fascinated by it. I mean, just to see a, a, a rat glowing, it was fucking wild <laughs> as fuck. And they talk about this fish, like this, uh, I think it's like a zebra striped fish or some shit that uh, you could cut its tail off, you can cut an organ out of it, and it will regenerate it. Uh-huh. And the, the possibilities of that, that we could actually, Fucking zombie set, fish. instead of us having to, no, put it- Regrow for, limbs and yeah, stuff. Yeah, regrow organs. Instead They've been of trying having to, to get a, with, a yeah, transplant blizzards. that you grow your own from tissue, like- mm -hmm. yeah, oh, Matter man. of time before someone does that shit on a human. It's like, just because so, we can do it doesn't you, mean we should at, do it. Look at this. Yeah, I see that. The glowing rats. Yeah. Is so that these fucking are, crazy? These are okay. So put yourself in the mind of these these biohackers. What would you do? What do you think they're going to try and do next? Right now, they're just having fun. Glowing rat. Eh, it seems safe. What oh, they're going to do? start doing things that give them like abilities. Like they brought it up on the show. Like um, you know, having like eagle vision. Yeah, they think they're like <laughs> oh X Men. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, like getting like taking the DNA from like an eagle and then Im Im implanting it into you, so you can have like eagle vision and shit. <laughs> All of a sudden, you're like you're fucking eating worms and shit. Yeah, yeah. what's wrong with you, bro? I don't yeah. know. I, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 crazy to me that we're here. I know it, it, it is getting weird. It's getting really weird. You, I, I I it it worries me because it is like it's real like like backyard like alchemy going on. You know, it's not like and. It, the thing is, we, we but it's real. It's not it's, alchemy. Alchemy's bullshit. This is real. Yeah, I know, but it just it has that same feel of like, yeah, we know that there's like real science and there's professionals in this direction, but we're just gonna like start fucking with stuff, you know? Well, how long do you think until athletes uh, start doing this to make themselves real soon? Real soon. Steroids I, don't don't even. There's no chance. They don't have a chance. If you could just alter your like, yeah, they were showing the myostatin one. And I think that's going to be the first one. Get some that they, legs. Dude. I think that's going to be the <laughs> gorilla arms. <Yeah. laughs> I think, Holy shit! I think that's oh, yeah. the first one. That's. I mean, if there's if there's these weird bodybuilder guys, and I don't like to call them throw them in the bodybuilder category, just weird people that do the. They already do it anyway. They inject themselves with whatever. They, that's what I'm they saying. Can. That you they inject with the. You know, we saw what's that called? The synthol. 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 Yeah. yeah, synthol that they do, and they make it so crazy that their shoulders are this big around their arms are all deformed all fluid i mean if you're willing to do that i mean why not try and you know stick some glowing shit in you or eagle eye shit or some you know myostatin blockers to be fucking hercules like, you're, you're like hey dude yeah. when i go to the club let me tell you something i get all the attention you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? cool. oh, yeah. your fingers are fucking <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't that's know that's weird peacock yeah. feathers out of my it's ass. got it's a whole series i only watched the first episode last night katrina fell asleep to it. she's like are you really into this I'm like, yeah, you're not fascinated by this. Dude. There's certain things. Yeah. There's de you guys have shows that you can watch on. You have to watch on. Your I own. have to watch them. Actually, that's the reason why I stopped watching it was because like Courtney comes from a medical background, so that's like nails on a chalkboard right away. It pisses her off. Yeah. Probably. So like, it was like I can't watch this. I'm like, ah, all right. I guess I can't watch it either. I'm gonna check it out. That yeah. sounds really. I, I'll yeah. have to follow up on that. S yeah. Speaking of bodybuilders, uh, did you see the what Kai Green posted? Oh yeah, the other we, day? well we both fired on there. Yeah, did you see Jesse Sarko? Right? Yeah. Oh, so now he's like talking about trying to become a meatless athlete. He watched um, Game Changers, the documentary that you know the vegan propaganda, well made, very well made vegan propaganda uh, documentary, and we've covered that in a previous episode. You could actually search our podcast. We went and watched it when it got released in theaters. But here's a pro bodybuilder, massive. He's on I don't know how much how many different drugs or whatever to make himself look Just that way. Just try all of them. And then he says, hey, man, I'm thinking about going, you know, meatless. You know, this this uh, this documentary's got me all shook up or yeah, something like that. Yeah, he's healthier for me. <laughs> maybe what? I, maybe I'm doing it wrong. He, yeah. he reposted the blood vial one. Remember that part? Yeah. Where they show the, the blood. That's not science, dude. That doesn't mean anything. What they did there doesn't mean. That's not science. That's not how it works. That's not a study. The <laughs> yeah. whole documentary was that. But, but it, I find it funny that you got this because then Dennis James chimed in. Remember Dennis James? Yeah, he says he, he's thinking about doing it too. For what? For your health? <laughs> the wow, last so they could sell protein. Yeah, the last person I would ever... 
Never take health advice from a pro bodybuilder. See, don't be surprised. Okay. Now, you brought up the James Cameron thing. I didn't that. bring it up on the show. Oh, yeah. We didn't talk about that. No, I know. But we, we brought it up on the show originally. We yeah. said that 100% we think at some point they're going to be well, we selling uh, vegan protein or supplements. Yeah. And, and sure enough. Yeah. James Cameron is how much? $140 million or something. Yeah. Like that? So, so, okay. If him and Arnold are in on something, it, it would be a smart strategy to go get a Kai Green, a Dennis James. Mm -hmm. So who knows if these yeah. guys are all setting the table. Oh, yeah. For promoting a a vegan protein, that's sponsored in athletes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I wouldn't be surprised if Vega you, powder if Kai doesn't really care or truly understand the fucking science, uh, and is just already being paid to advertise. Sure. For that. And, I mean, if if I was if I was doing it and trying to make money, that's exactly what I'd do. I'd find somebody who has a lot of attention like that, um, and I would tell him, hey post like this just you know i'm thinking about doing this over the next couple of weeks or whatever and then we'll come out in a month and you'll be officially promoting our vegan pro that would be a smart way to do it versus just uh, yeah, come out and be like oh i switched to vegan now and here's my protein powder it's just it's funny to me it reminds me of um i had like buddies that they would ask me about supplements and they'd be like oh here you know creatine take creatine it's one of the most effective ones like yeah yeah, I don't know if it's safe or if... I'm like, you did fucking cocaine at the club the other night. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know if creatine is like... You know what I mean? Oh, I don't know if I want to take protein powders because I, I don't know. know I'm more into the natural stuff. You know, I'm like, yeah. you take yeah. molly pills. <laughs> you know, it's like these bodybuilders are like... epitome of health. I might go to... Yeah, I don't know. I might go plant-based. It got me all shook up. Like, Kai Green, let's look at yeah. a list of priorities <laughs> yeah. to, for your health. Or like back in the day when you got the hydroxy cut athlete that's like, you know, super steroided out out and shredded and it's like yeah hydroxy cut dude it happened in like a couple weeks no it's this 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 is getting to it's getting it's reaching a fever pitch with uh this movement i have nothing against if you want to go eat this way but i have something against the way that they are uh demonizing meat it's totally inaccurate it's, there's it's not supported by actual research and science and you want somebody who's going to right now rob wolf is spending a lot of time in fact, what is Rob's Instagram? It's it's Dars, Das Das D A S uh, Wolf, Wolf I think. Yeah. Is it Das Wolf? You yeah. should look that up. So Das Rob Wolf is me, that oh, Das it, Rob Wolf? Maybe, yeah. Maybe. For those that are listening, that you know, hear what Sal's saying right now, and and the the you know these people, right? Yeah. Da Show das. me a study, Sal. Show me a study. Yeah. Uh, he uh, Rob is just dropping them left and right. He's in the middle of actually writing a book uh, to counter this terrible message. Um, so if you want. Uh, the researcher you want to hear somebody who's like speaking to this specific topic and you want more information um uh, rob wolf is the man so he's he's posting on this and, and speaking out but, on it quite but you're right it is smart for them to go after the because that whole documentary showed yeah. athletes and boners yeah. like that was their whole agenda yes it was <laughs> yeah we're gonna knock this down and it was all to counter the you know that makes you weak or makes you less manly or whatever it's so like no it doesn't yeah, these guys got better boners. Yeah, That's longer, in the documentary. About, yeah, so it's yeah, it's right. Das Rob Wolf. So D A S, and then Rob is R O B B, and then Wolf. So Wolf, there's wolf. an L in there. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Wolf, <laughs> wolf, 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 wolf. It's silent fucker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a silent L, dude. Yeah, dude, you want to hear something crazy? I yeah, do, I do. I, do. So I love crazy. I read the, crazier the, than the the red light there. No, this study. is yeah. No, this is really crazy. <laughs> <It's> magic. <laughs> there was this. Uh, this uh, in in Japan, there was this fan that was stalking this uh, Japanese celebrity girl or whatever, and he got arrested on indecency or whatever. So I guess he was I don't know what he was doing, but anyway, he was he was a stalker. He found out where she lived by her Instagram and social media pictures by looking at the pupils of her eyes and the reflection off of her no. eyes. Yes. Jesus, what a fucking creep! By watching the reflection off her eyes, he used Google Maps, Ugh. figured out where she was. Shut the fuck up! And found her. Damn, there's people out there like that, dude. Yeah, dude, that's Ugh. what you could do with technology now. Did you guys ever watch that series? Oh. Um, I think Doug watched it. The the, the 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 creepy guy that shows you kind of how like stalkers are today. Oh yeah, we all watched that. Did you watch it too? Yes. It was really good. What was oh, it? Oh yeah, I forgot the name I, of that I one. You. you, 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 yes, you. It, I think yeah. they're coming out with another season of that. But yeah, that was a great show. I just found that one fascinating because I, we grew up. You know, I, okay. If, if there was ever a time in your life when you had a little stalker in you. It was probably when you were like in high schoolish, right? When you're like in in love with some girl, sure. and, yeah, yeah, right. And like, what did you do? You know what I'm saying? Like, you 
looked at her across the classroom. Maybe you had like a, a yearbook that you looked at. Like you, I mean, that was always like, trying to get hugs. That was the, yeah. Always trying to get a hug. Every excuse you can to get a hug. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, uh. well, that is the move yeah. though, right? Nice sweater. <laughs> I mean, that's the extent. Of, oh, you feel good. Can I smell your, let me smell and your then, hair. Yeah. And then maybe if you're like a real weird creep, you go stand outside her house, right? And you look through. Oh yeah. Then you're, yeah. yeah oh then, my God. Then yeah. You're, you've gone too far. That's the extreme, right? Yeah. But I mean, you now. follow him home. Now with like all these social media platforms and everybody putting themselves out there so much and recording videos of themselves, the level of stalker has just gone through the roof. Oh, stalkers are having the best so time easy. ever. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, be, it's the best it's time the to best, be a stalker. It's the best. <laughs> They're like, this is like peak stalker. It's the best time ever. <laughs> I, I, when I, I watch I can that. Find anybody? <laughs> I, wa- I, I can watch- stalk like five people <laughs> yeah. at once. I don't even need binoculars anymore. <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah. I watched uh, that. I got sh- satellites. That show with Jessica, where that guy is like finding where she is, and he's doing it through her Facebook and where she commented and the location, her friends, and they show on the show like how you oh, can yeah. actually do this. And Jessica's like, this isn't, and I'm like shocked. I'm like, oh my God, that's crazy. She's like, this isn't anything new. I'm like, excuse me? She's like, yeah, girls have known this since social media came out. She's like, girls, girlfriends, like they know how to use social media to find shit out about you oh, whenever yeah. they want. So I, like if a chick is dating someone, yeah. her friends will be like, oh, let me find out. And they'll go and do this like social media yeah. thing. And figure shit out. I remember I found out the hard way. I remember when we first got on Instagram, we just got, we just you got started so, liking like, yeah, yeah, random I, posts. I mean, I like wait, you can you know like what I'm liking? I I, I would yeah exa- <laughs> exactly. I remember I remember coming I gotta home. Be careful. I remember coming home one day and Katrina being like, "Hey, could you like calm down with the uh, booty pic likes and stuff?" And I'm like, "What? Like, you know that? Yeah, yeah. She's not even on Instagram. Oh, man, got- I'm like, wait a second. Your fucking friends are like messaging you. They're like screenshotting if I liked something or commented yeah. some shit." Yeah. I like, don't like this girl's post like, you know, a bunch of times. Yeah. <laughs> she should have. She played her hand wrong, Dang. dude. Katrina, you should have played your hand differently. Yeah, she, I would have. I would have been like, so totally. Uh, she, you ever like like butt pino you know, girl? Pino, <laughs> yeah, or, no? set me oh, up. you don't? That's weird. <laughs> that would never work. Me. She'd ask. I'd be like, yes. You know, what I'm saying that's who, that's who I am for sure. You know, but <laughs> yeah. she's more like embarrassed about it because she's like, hey, could you stop? I've got a fucking ton of my friends and coworkers <laughs> that follow you and stuff, and they. I'm like, yeah. they could see that. How do they say? It? I have no idea. Oh man, <laughs> I enjoy the sport of. Bikini. What? <laughs> what? Mind your own business, everyone. Yeah, exactly. My God. Anyway. Oh shit! It's a. Hey, so I want. Speaking of crazy, like articles, I was reading. Uh, Complex this morning popped up. This lady, two chicks, uh, McDonald's. Okay, she goes through drive through. I guess her order's wrong or some shit, and then she is waiting. She comes in the store. She parks her car. She got four kids in the car. Whatever. She comes in. And she's like waiting to like tell them like the order's wrong. And then like she's arguing back and forth with the manager. This thing goes on for like 20 minutes. And finally, the lady gets so pissed. She goes back in her car. She gets all the food that was in the car. And then she slams on the counter. She's asking for a refund, a return. Manager's fighting with her across the counter. So she starts taking the fucking food and she's chucking it at the manager over, over oh at, across the counter. God. Manager grabs a fucking blender and throws a blender. Knocks her out. Oh, knocks wow. her out the oh, blender, bro. She's you should have seen the pictures of her face, dude. All purple eyes, swollen stitches. I fucked wow. her up, dude. Wow, that escalated. Yeah, big lawsuit coming for well, sure. Well, you know, there's when you're a, a minimum wage employee, you're not like you're like, well, if I lose this job, it's not <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This lady just threw a French fry at me. I gotta kill her <laughs> real quick. Yeah, don't fuck you, with those people. I'll send the video yeah, to like, Doug so yeah. Doug can show you guys because it's like it's oh, a hard shit. enough time. Have yeah. you guys ever been in a, situ- in a situation like that where you're just at a random <laughs> restaurant or something, and then well, something. I told you about my incident with the uh, my car being towed. Oh. Remember that one? Oh, I got a what? story. For I you forgot guys. about that. You don't yeah. remember my car being towed situation? No. Okay, so when I used to have my my first house had a uh, gated community, and um, you could only have uh, you had one parking pass, and then you had the garage, and I had a three bedroom, and I used to rent it out when I when I first lived there, so I always had two roommates. Plus me, I've always had like two cars. So my two cars are in the garage and then we have two other cars that we're trying to park in our, our complex. Well, and you only get one parking pass. So it was like the shell game that we were always trying to play because, and this is something I found out later. I don't know if you guys know this, but gated communities make contract deals with tow truck places. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. And they basically give them the code. This happened to me before. So they can come in mm-hmm. and pluck cars that don't have passes mm-hmm. And it's like a, a kickback, you know what I'm saying? So they they Total they racket. they hit me for like 270. So if they get if you get hit and towed, it costs me like 270 to get it out. Mm. And, and then obviously that gets more the, the longer the longer it sits in there. 
So, and this is during my uh, time in my life. I'm, you know, mid twenties, I'm making really good money. I'm renting two rooms. So I kind of have this attitude or like, it's more of a game at first for me. I'm just like, ah, whatever. I'll try and hide it and, you know, yeah. figure if out. If I what, get towed once a year, big deal. Yeah. Well, it's more like once or twice a month, but wow. so it's happening. Yeah, it's happening quite a bit. And of course, anytime that I would, uh, you know, bring somebody home and they, they would spend the night. One of the cars would get towed. That was just part of the deal. I was just like, okay, I got to pay this. So I'm a good sport about this, right? I've been towed, I've been towed a bunch of times. Uh, in fact, it gets to the point where. Wow. A lot of times, a lot of you times. You can't even think of it like park outside over there outside the gate. I lived on East side San Jose, yeah, bro. You don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah you don't come back. I, your your uh, car's right. on blocks. I was way rather pay two seventy than take the risk of parking it in East side oh, San, sure. San Jose. <laughs> San Jose <laughs> my stereo and shit. TV's <laughs> gone. Everything's fucking stripped out of there. Yeah. So no, I'm parking in my gated community. I'm rolling the dice. If I get hit a couple times in the month, it happens, right? So I kind of have this like attitude. Like I think I'm play, I'm a good sport about it. They I come down there and there's like the same the same process, same people too. It's like a family owned tow truck place, and every time I come in there, you know you have to you you know you bring your license, your registration, you prove it's your vehicle, you got to sign for it. They photocopy stuff, and then this big like it reminds me of like the member the master appointment book that we used to have in training. Oh, it's a big uh, yeah, yeah big book. old appointment book with that and everyone's stuff on there. So I'm in there, and I'm in there like every other week, right? It's crazy how much I've come down here, know everybody there. And <clears throat> one time, this older lady's there, and she is just being a bitch to me. She's being rude and stuff, and I'm like, hey. I come down here and give you guys money all the time. You guys do this to me and you're going to give me shit and stuff like that. And she tells me that I, I need uh, my registration. And I'm like, I was just here last week. I'm like, and I'm like, flipped, I'm flipping the book back in front of her. You know, this is me right here. That's, <laughs> That's me. My name. That's me right there. I'm, this is this is my car. Let me. Nope. You can't have it unless you have your registration. And I'm like on my way to work and she's just being an absolute bitch to me. And I'm getting hella pissed. And I'm getting so mad that I have to go all the way back home to go look for this registration. And of course, I go back home, and Katrina, I think, is out of town or something like this at this time. And so she doesn't have, doesn't have, she had it on her, and I couldn't get it. And so this lady will not give me my car. So we had to go through this whole process where she comes back, she gets me the registration. And we're hours into this, work is already fucking shot for the day. I'm fucking pissed. And I remember going, you know what? Fuck this, fuck these people. This is what I'm gonna do. So I go to the bank. I get two hundred and seventy dollars in quarters, <laughs> yeah. and I break them out of the little rolls, and I put them in a, a fucking big ass bag, you know. And I come and I, I slam here's your it. money. Here's your fucking money. And boy, was she pissed. And they were fighting with me about that. They, I couldn't do that. And I said, what do you mean I can't do that? It's, it's fucking money, money right there. and you have to. They're like, you got to count it. I said, I already did count it. I know there's enough there. You got to count it if you don't believe me. Give me my fucking car. So, oh, man, it took three people to come in. They're spreading the quarters out. And they wouldn't let me have my car until they counted the money. Mm -hmm. I went next door to McDonald's. I got myself a sandwich and a fucking drink, and I just sat there. <laughs> That's a good yeah, time. I just sat there and watched them count the quarters. When I did that. I'm so fucking mad. <laughs> My day was already ruined. You know Dude. what I'm saying? Day's already shot and ruined. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. gonna have, go have a drink, sit here, and watch these guys count my quarters up after uh, they did funny. that. Yeah, no, I had like so when I was in college, I had a few of these jobs where I was working at restaurants, and uh, this was where I just knew like this this new Red Robin just opened up, and I'm like, okay, I could get a job there easy. Like based, I've worked at a restaurant before, whatever. I'm just gonna do this in the meantime, get cash because I have a, a car and I need like spending money around campus and whatnot, and so I get this shitty job. And I'm working, you know, this section and, and this guy comes in with his wife and, you know, this, this rich couple, whatever. And this guy is just like a, a total prick to me since like the whole, like super condescending, just like completely like, like, you know, everything he says is like a, a slight towards me. Uh, and so I'm in the back and we're really close to the kitchen. And so there's like the, the cooks are kind of yelling back and forth. He thinks it's about his stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 this has nothing to do with your order. Like, cause he, he kept pulling on me. He's like, what's going on back there? What's happening? Blah, blah. And so he's like freaking out and I'm like trying to calm down. I'm like, look, there's nothing to do. You guys are fine. Like you'll get your food. Like everything's cool. And so like finally get their food, all that kind of stuff. Like he's, he's like having me go back and forth between all these different condiments just to be a dick. And so then I come back with like the dessert menu and I give it's like this little card menu thing. And I like put it down I'm like, so you guys, you know, interested in it. And so he grabs it right away. I'm not interested. I've had the worst service here ever. He throws it right at my face. <laughs> I was like, oh, now you've done it. Grabbed a blender. Now you've done it. <laughs> Took my apron off. Wait, wait, wait. He actually threw it at your face. At my face. Right in front of his wife. And I was just like. 
okay, now you've done it. Took my stuff out. I was like, I'm going to be right outside, dude. Like, let's let's handle this outside. And so I just like, walked right outside, and I was waiting there. And they ended up escorting him out to his car with his wife and everything. He was all like, Ugh. like didn't think, like, Oh, I'm gonna sit there. I'm gonna take that, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? Did you get fired? I, I could someone... not believe it. I wanted to kill him. Did you get fired? No, I didn't get fired because everybody saw it. Like they saw what a dick he was being to me. And like I, at first they were like, if you do, they gave me a warning, you know. And they, the, the corporate had, like had to like make calls with me. I had like, I don't know. They almost like had to have like a. a I think it was like three or four managers had meetings with me, you know, after that. And I'm just like, look, this guy was just like being unreasonable, and like I'm not gonna sit there and take that. You know, have, they you agreed got, with me. Have you guys ever had someone spit in your face? Oh, no. Oh, hell no. That's I, biohazard. Bro, I had someone spit in my face one oh, time. My God. What? Oh, yeah. No, that would. We were like. Uh, I don't know how I'd straight, react. That's straight, like, right I, to the face. I almost so, feel like I'd explode or something. So we were. We, it was, this is like. Um, oh, my God. I'm, I'm going to say probably 24 ish or so. And I'm with. I'm with my cousin and I'm with like four other buddies of mine. So there's like five, five or six of us that are all going out. We go down to the Pink Poodle, which is a strip club. <laughs> uh, it's a very classy one. I, uh, I, I frequented there uh, a few times. <laughs> that is the worst strip <laughs> club uh, ever. Well, I know. Here uh, comes Susie. My 18 year old uh, birthday. Yeah, back from maternity yeah. leave. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, bro. Wow. It's not She's that bad. She's got brand new stretch marks to show. <laughs> hey. Oh, okay. So I know, I know one of the dancers there right so i know one of the, i know one of the girls there and so we go and we have a great time there's nothing like going to a strip club and actually knowing one of the dancers uh that's <laughs> it's, yeah that's one of the yeah. best best ways to go to a, a strip it's like club cheers you know like, yeah no no you get all the love when it's when they when they know you like that right yeah. so anyways so we have an incredible time yeah so you great. have a chair yeah, yeah. <laughs> your seat Adam, mr shaper you're yeah. back <laughs> So it's me, my buddies, and everything like that. We have a great night. We stay. We close the place down. It's two in the morning. Now, strip clubs have this uh, a very strict rule uh, that <laughs> you know so much. <laughs> no touching. You're gonna break it down. <laughs> yeah. No touching. Yeah. it's this rule. Yeah, yeah, sit yeah. on your hands. I don't know if you've yeah. heard of it before. Yeah. But Everybody you... knows that rule. It's yeah, a different yeah, yeah. rule. Yeah. Looky, okay. no touchy. They, they have. Yeah. They have a rule. Okay, if you don't know this, that uh, a stripper cannot get picked up in front of the club. Oh, man. So she cannot be, she cannot like p get in a car. <laughs> why, do you, why do you know this? Why do you know this? This, this rule, Adam. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why I know. <laughs> okay, okay. Fuck I, off. I, I don't know what this rule. Okay. Do you want the spitting in your face story or not? Okay, right, you want sorry. the story or not? Right, okay. So, uh, so it's two o'clock. Place is shut down. It's actually a little bit later than that because they have to clean up, get their stuff, count their money, all that shit, right? So it's more like two thirty in the morning, and. You know, we're out there. There's actually another group of like drunk ass dudes out there. And I know that we can't stand right in front of of the club and get a taxi to pick us up because she's gonna end up coming out and coming with us. So I call a cab and it's and I go I will walk about a block away to so we can get picked up. And as I call the cab, like it's like 2.30 or so in the morning. Well, it takes like 30 plus minutes, dude. Because it's, no, there's no cabs out, out there at this time. Yes. It's, it's just- Before Uber. Right. This is before Uber existed. So it's taking forever. It's like th after three o'clock in the morning, she's already came out now. We're waiting down and I see the cab come up and the cab fip flips right in front of the club. And fucking those five dudes pile in the in the van. Oh, they take your. Oh, they take. They oh, get they in. It. And so we go fucking. Rah, we're running down the block, you know, to get get down there. No, 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 no. That's my cat. That's my cat. We're jamming down there. Cab starts to take off. He flips around, heading the other direction, and then he pulls over right away. So obviously he's probably PDCing together that these that's are the. Not the it's not them people. So I come running up. They got a a, a van full of. Guys in there, and the and the passenger rolls down the window, and I'm yelling that I'm at him, I'm at him, and the guys in the back are like, no, I'm at him. He's being funny and drunk yeah. and an asshole and stuff like that. And I'm like, hey, that's my fucking man. I'm get the fuck out, get the. And we're all, you know, all my buddies are all oh, acting. They're all acting tough because they're inside the van. And the dude in the front seat looks at me and whoa, spits right on my fucking face. And it was like a reflex. I just whack as fast yeah. as I could, dude, to <laughs> fucking send him into the middle of the fucking van. Oh. They finally, the guy pulls up what, like a, about another block in front of us, kicks all of them out, and then flips around and picks all of us up. But that was the first time that that had ever happened to me. And it was really funny because it wasn't, I didn't even think about it 
just the natural reaction oh, yeah. was to just fucking hit this dude. Like that's I, pretty much, yeah, I would assume that would happen. Dude, that's biohazard. I yeah. mean, that's you could catch some weird disease with with spit. In fact, that's probably one of the most dangerous weapons you have. And it's against also somebody. It's one of the most disrespect. It's like it's the, the, the top of the top, right? Contempt. It's like pure. Oh, it yeah. is. You can say a lot of things to it's me. It's like a backhand slap. You know what I mean? It's not like a front slap. Is that yeah. you get slapped <laughs> with the back of a hand? Yeah. It's like you have to like make yourself not and even. Like that a, is is still one step under that, like spitting in the face. Yeah, right. Has to be the the ult- Un- unacceptable on all levels. The ultimate. That's you're getting your terrible. ass kicked. I wonder yeah. if the pink poodle's still there. I think it, it is. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. It's not God, that, that far from us, guys. The- <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It actually Disgusting. is close. To- <laughs> it is. Close to- <laughs> It like, wasn't that bad. Memories, yes, bro. Yeah. I mean, it's like one of the better ones in San Jose. I mean, you can't, you don't uh, get a lot of options over here. We're, getting, we're not yeah. the strip capital. Hey, it's we're, not like Vegas. That's we're sure. we're going to get a bunch of uh, angry DMs. Hey, yeah, hey, we, hey, I've been working there for two years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My name's Alexis, and I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> anyway, well, I had an article I want to bring up. But I don't know if it's <laughs> whatever. I see you transition well, to some I, science there, but hey. it was a cool article. But I don't, you know, I don't know. Well, I, you know what? I have another like weird, not weird. But another transition along these types of topics, since we're talking about strippers and sex and all that crazy stuff. Uh, yeah, what's up with um, Bill Cosby? Oh, jeez, oh, yeah, That's good. Perfect. That is yeah, a good transition. Right? He went to jail. Oh, you see how you know it was only he only got sentenced for three to ten years. That's it. That's it. And they're going to. They're. I think they're in the middle right now of an appeal of that. And even if they'll only do like one year, Watch. that's all he's going to do. Yeah. If even if they get if they don't get the appeal and the appeal gets denied, he if it's three to ten years, he'll serve half the three. Right. right. Isn't that kind of standard? Stupid. You're going to hold an 81 year old in there for if you're if, they, if I mean he's going to be in good behavior. What the hell is he going to do in there? I, I mean his age probably plays a big role. Yeah, right. How old is how he's old 81? Is 81. That's got to be what played the biggest. Besides the fact that he's got a shit ton of money and he's Bill Cosby. You know what I mean? But just what he did. Fuck. Oh, Three to yeah. ten years? It's nothing. It's, no, that's, that's nothing, dude. Oh my god, you don't pay four speeding tickets. I think you have the same. Bro, sentence, there's people. There's people it's who ridiculous. get. There's people in some states who get caught with you know twenty hits of acid and go to jail fifteen years. Yeah, you know, and didn't do any. They didn't rape anybody. You right. know what I mean? They just had ten hits of acid on them, and you got Bill Cosby, and he's that's crazy to me. I know, but I wonder if his age is the biggest. You know what I mean? Because what is that? I mean, if you murder somebody at eighty one, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Well, if you think about it, he's like, eighty one, or else everybody everyone well, that turns seventy five, eighty, just go around killing. Well, hold, everybody. hold on, it's tarnished all his work. Yeah, but sure. hold on a second. Let's think about this. Let's think this through. Three to ten years is life for eighty one year old guy. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, yeah. Like you give him forty years in prison, he's going to serve three years and then die of old age, maybe. I, I would think that that's what they would. That would be the goal for them is to fucking put this guy the away. rest of your life, right? You know what mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah. You're going to jail for the rest of your life because you may only live another ten years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At, at that best. that was such a crazy situation for me to experience because you love this, Bill Cosby. Well, this is how powerful media is. I don't know Bill Cosby at all. I've never met him in my life. I don't know what kind of person he is, mm-hmm. but I 100% have this cemented, solidified image of Bill Cosby as this great it fucking guy. Completely constructed. Totally fake. Yeah, fabricated. And 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 who are you know there's a there's if when you look at like psychopaths, right? Or so you know, people with uh, some of these disorders where they're just they're just fake, right? They're really really fake sociopaths or whatever. Um what makes the worst ones the worst is that they're really good at acting mm-hmm. a particular way. Mm-hmm. Well, the best actors in the world are actors. You know what I mean? They're Hollywood. Yeah. So those, boy, what a terrible combination. Like you get a famous actor who's like Academy Award winning or just really good at making himself or herself look likable. And then on top of it, they do all this other shit. It's like you can't. And I heard this about Bill Cosby. I swear to God, I was like, there's no way. Yeah. This Bill Cosby. There's no way he did that shit. Yeah, Crazy. He was the moral guy. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. First question is from Dress Fit. What do you guys think about daily undulation? Uh, they're referring to probably what nutrition? I'm no, assuming. no, no, no. They're talking about exercise programming. Oh, so so changing. So undulation essentially is changing your exercise programming, but on a daily basis in terms of the fundamental mm. aspects of your workout. Because so, when you see studies, the studies will show that this. So they did it. They did a really good study where they did this, where they, you daily, you did it daily, or you uh, you did it in phases, or periodized it. Periodized it. Did I say that right? Uh, now I can't say. Periodize it. it. <laughs> periodize it. No. Peri- peri- fuck. Now I periodize. can't say. Periodize. Periodize. There we yeah, go. So, <laughs> Doug, are we saying it wrong? 
I don't even know. Periodization. Now. Periodize. Yes. Yeah. Periodize. Okay. Right? That would yeah, be the short? Good. Yeah. Okay. So, I said it right the first so, time. So you got me all over from this, that, that intro, bro. I'm all yeah. over the map right now. So yeah, they did that. And then they did some uh, 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 on a group that didn't change at all. And they found that uh, daily and then like uh, every three weeks was uh, almost the same and the, a little bit better in daily. Now, this was a shorter study that was only, I think, a few months long, mm -hmm. but at the end of the at the end of the day, we know that it's important that you you change your exercise up. Now, I, <clears throat> I used to do it every single day uh, for a long time. Now, why I like the way we do it now, like how you, how most all the maps programs are, where we phase it in, you in know, blocks. yeah, in blocks of two to four weeks. What I think is better about that, and even though the studies have shown that they're pretty much equal. Uh, what I think is better about that, it's easier for me to gauge and see things and see progress. Mm -hmm. So when I'm, if I'm constantly changing exercises and, and changing rep ranges and changing all those things up on like a daily basis, it's really hard to see like if I'm doing something and I'm consistently doing it, if it's, if it's making progress or I'm getting better at it or which, which movement or exercise I, I'm getting the biggest bang for my buck because there's an individual variance in all that with, all, with each of us. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a, a movement for Sal uh, is just okay. But for me, like, wow, I've noticed huge strength gains when I did that or it feels great when I do it or whatever. And when you are constantly changing it every every day, it's kind of hard to measure those types of things versus, you know, following a program or sticking to something for a good solid three to four weeks and then starting mm -hmm. to, to change everything up. I found that was something later on that when we and this is something that we we did together. I know Sal, the first maps in a block was created this way, but all of the maps programs are based off of this foundation and to me, I think that's that's superior. Yeah, so it's it's really a difference between you know doing training in the let's say four to six rep range for three weeks versus training four to six reps on Monday and then Tuesday is you know twelve to eighteen and then Friday is fifteen to you know fifteen reps and then it's one to three reps. So daily undulating would be just changing it all the time versus staying within a particular rep range or a particular style for a week or two or or three or even four. Now, here's the thing. Uh, our our opinion is based off of our experience training a lot of people. And I would surmise that if you took a large enough sample size, if you did another if you did enough of these studies and took a large enough sample size, you would find that the blocking or phasing of uh, you know, people's uh, workouts rather than daily undulation will be more successful because for one of the reasons, which is what Adam said, people can learn about their bodies more. They learn what it feels like and how their body responds when they train just in low reps for a little while or just in moderate or high reps or when they train in a particular style for a little while. And that is priceless, by the way. Like, no, Here's the thing. If you want consistent, long-term success, the most important factor is knowing your body. Mm -hmm. Learning your body is what's going to contribute to long-term success more than anything else. And for general population... Uh, learning your body means you should stick in, in something for long enough to learn it, understand how you, how it feels, and how you respond to it. The other thing is this, there, and this again, uh, you're not going to find this in, in, a, in a couple small sample studies. You'll find this in large sample studies or, or, or lots of them, is that when you're training in a particular uh, you know phase for uh, three weeks, there's a mindset that accompanies it. So what I mean by that is, when I go to the gym and I approach a workout where I'm training in the four rep range and you know doing longer rest periods, it's a very different mindset than going to the gym and training with supersets for 12 reps. And that mindset actually develops and solidifies over the course of one, two, or three weeks versus flipping all the time back and forth. Well, it's like sharpening up on your skills versus like, you know, just reacting to the day. So it, I don't know, I, I, I look at it differently in terms of I want to get better and I want to be able to see progress. So I have to have benchmarks to sort of guide the way. And, and there's, there's certain exercises that are, uh, you know, going to be, you know, higher in the priority list and, you know, a rep range that I want to see, you know, how my body uh, can improve upon. And the only way to do that is to to repeat it enough times to really have a proper assessment of that. And that, so, I mean, in the argument of like just changing it up all the time, I mean, it, it maybe you could make that for just if I'm constantly I'm in an environment where I have to react to things constantly and I like it, I, I'm I'm 
you know, I, I have the ability where now I'm, I'm creating this, this new skill of, of, you know, being hyper responsive towards like all these different forces at once. But, uh, in terms of like me, like being able to really assess that I'm getting strong in this direction because of this, I have to like extract that out. I mean, I, I see value in it. If you're somebody that has been training for a really long time and you've already gotten good at all the skills you know your body yeah you know your body really really well you're not this isn't the, the the learning process this isn't your first five years of training you've been training for decades and you know and so you like to switch these things up on a, on a very regular basis i i don't see any any problem with that i just to sal's point that uh, our advice comes from training the general population and when i think of that i think i'm i've spent most of my career trying to teach the skill of lifting weights to my clients for a long time and if you were if we looked at this like a skill, just like a, an athlete is learning their sport, whether it be basketball or soccer or baseball. You what you wouldn't do is constantly be throwing different skills at them every single day or multiple right. things in a day. You would you would focus on one thing and you would stick to that until they got really really good at that, and then you would move on to the next thing and stick to that until they got really really good at it. Because there is the the learning curve of the skill of the movement which I think later on plays a that's why those studies I think are a bit flawed because if you take you know if you take the three of us who've been lifting for a really long time and we do something that's daily you do something that's every 3 to 4 weeks and then you don't change it at all I think it would confirm what those studies showed but if you took somebody who you took thousands of people to your point Sal that have that are really still learning how, <clears throat> how to squat properly and to deadlift and do some of these movements and would it be better for them to stick to that squat or stick to that deadlift for four weeks consistently versus squatting one day, then doing Bulgarian squats another day, then doing lunges another day. Oh, that for sure, yeah. Right. They, they, they're they they barely figuring – each one of those mo movements are extremely difficult in themselves, and to be flipping them all the time, I don't think you're, you're giving yourself the opportunity to get really good at the skill of it. Next question is from Dave Colquitt. How do you work on keeping your feet and knees straight during a squat or deadlift? I've tried keeping them that way, but it's a lot more comfortable to point my toes slightly out. You don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to point them. I, I remember when I first learned that and I thought, oh, everybody has to be. But when you look at anatomy and the different variances from individual to individual, you find that there are there are some things. There's a lot of things you can change. Mm -hmm. um, your, your, your tissue pliability, extensibility, the, how it extends, how tight it is, how strong it is or stable it is. But there's some things you can't change, like your bone. Like you, you have a hip bone structure um, and the femur that fits in the hip um, and, and your joint and that structure. It's not going to change. It's it just It is the way it is. And if your joint is a particular way, it may actually be better for you to have your feet pointed out a little bit when you squat uh, or when you deadlift. Um, and for some people, it may be straight. You have to identify if, if it's a, a tissue issue or if it's a bone or joint uh, issue. And sometimes uh, it's a bone or joint issue. I'm glad you went that direction because I'm going to go the other direction. The, the reason why I don't completely like that advice, even though it's true, is that people hear that and then they – they it's just cemented now. Yeah. Well, not only that, but then they justify this extreme external rotation in their feet because they're so tight, mm. they can't get their feet straight. And I say this because this was me. Uh, if I were to squat, if you looked at my squat just uh, two years ago, uh, maybe three now, uh, I had I had to have a really wide stance. My feet were pretty externally rotated, um, and it was just because I was extremely tight everywhere. And when I started to work on the 9090, it really started to mobilize my hips, which the ability to mobilize the hips allowed me to rotate my feet in even more. So I think that, yeah, if you have a slight external rotation, that's that's okay. But I also want to be careful of, of telling people that because then what ends up happening is you have these people that stand really wide open and it's not because that's their anatomy. Mm -hmm. That Because if you think your gait, okay? It sh it shouldn't be that far off from your gait, and if your gait, it if you if your gait or your feet are that wide open, that you have a problem. You're not you're not walking properly if that's what your gait looks like. So we should be able to squat in the same position with our feet that we 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 walk in our gait. Mm. Yeah. And so and if it's that wide open, I guarantee if you looked at that person's gait, they would be completely externally rotated or what do they call it, duck feet 
out like that. And that is something that a lot of people can address and work towards. And a lot of that has to do with hip yeah, mobility. I think unless, I mean, if you're a competitive power lifter, you're going to kind of know that like it, a, a bit of external rotation is beneficial to you. You have, uh, you know, a sort of strength and comfort zone uh, within the way that your feet are set up there. However, I personally tend to lean on the fact that we should be able to squat with multiple uh, angles of your foot position and I should have them in a narrow stance and I should have them wide and I should have them externally yes. rotated, internally yes. rotated. And so to limit yourself to, uh, you know, like just justifying it based off of limb length or like a, a, a lack of, uh, you know, mobility there, I think is, is not really doing yourself like the full justice. I think that maybe that's just because we need work, you know, in that direction, we need to actually mobilize the hips or ankles uh, more effectively. So that, that would be more of like a revealing thing to me that like you have restriction uh, versus like, maybe this is an anatomy uh, issue. Yeah, well, it, it it also I mean it depends on how much they're pointing out. He says toes slightly pointed out. Right. I'd like to That's see what the normal. squat looks like. Yeah, yeah. toes slightly pointed out um, sounds to me pretty normal, but he may be thinking it's slightly pointed out, and he may be doing like what but you're saying. But I love what what Justin's saying because even to that point, like because I do this, like I I will squat, you know, with my feet completely straight and fucking four to six inches apart sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then i'll do a big wide sumo sometimes i will let my feet to come out and so i i think that's an excellent point why would you why would you limit yourself to a exact unless you're a power lifter because that's you're different. just trying to perfect the skill over yeah. and over again of that yeah same that's where like when you're a power lifter you don't you don't want to be messing with all these stances you want to take the stance you're going to take every time you get under the bar for the lights to go right like that's what that's what you care about it's performance based totally different for the average person who's listening who cares about just overall health, strength, um, and building muscle, those people, uh, absolutely, you should challenge yourself to be able to squat with a narrow stance, a wide stance, your feet straight, your feet externally rotate a little bit. And I, I think that's a fucking incredible point, Justin. Yeah, but I, I guess at the, at the end of the day, work on practicing your squatting and work on your mobility. This is why it's a skill because over time – you'll find as you improve on your mobility, your squat may start to look a little bit different and it may start to feel more uh, more comfortable over time. But ideally, I think that's great advice. Work on different stances unless you're a competitor. Next question is from Brandon LPZ26. When over training, you talked about lowering the volume. Should we reduce volume on our big key lifts or smaller lifts? You could reduce volume on either of them, but you want to consider the following. Um, the big lifts have a larger impact on your body's ability to recover than yeah. the small lifts. They're doing way more. Squat's doing way more damage than a tricep yeah. pushdown. So if you're, <laughs> but it's also sending the loudest muscle building, strength building, you know, adaptation signal as well. So if you're like really overtrained and you've identified that, oh, wow, I'm, I am not good at all and I'm really fatigued. Um, then you're probably going to want to look at reducing volume in both big, big lifts and smaller lifts. If you're like teetering on the edge, you're like, you know, I was progressing like two weeks ago or three weeks ago, and I feel like I'm kind of overdoing it, then I would look at the smaller lifts and kind of chip away right there. But that's really, really it. you got to weigh it out that way. Really, I, I feel like I would challenge that too. I feel like if someone's overtraining, I doubt it's because of your seated bicep curls, your tricep extensions, your lateral raises – your seated cable row, your machine chest press. I doubt it's any of those that are, and I doubt that that just reducing those exercises at all would actually scale back your overtraining. Um, well, it could be like this: like you could you could go to the gym and say, "I'm not doing any small lifts. <coughs> mm -hmm. I'm just going to squat because I've been overtraining. So I'm just going to go yeah, squat. You just do the main four or and five. just do the main yeah the main ones. Um, or you could do the reverse and hmm. go to the gym and be like, "Man, I am fried." I'm just going to do small lifts. I mean, in my experience, I've never been overtraining because of all those isolation movements I was saying. Yeah. It's always because I'm doing too much of the big four, and I've always got to pull. And the only thing that will make my joints feel better, allow my progression, allow myself to recover better, the only thing that does that is, is reducing some of those big compound lifts. Because to me, isolation, uh, machine, cable exercises – don't do nowhere. I feel like I could do those 
uh, five times a day, every single day. Non, they're almost like trigger sessions. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're yes, you can still train some of those movements to be tough, but I don't get inflamed joints. I don't get like se- severe fatigue. I don't see myself setting back my strength and le- and truly overtraining unless I'm. See, I've experienced hmm. um, the opposite. And Have I don't you? Mean, yeah, and I don't mean that. I'm not disagreeing that <clears throat> those that those exercises don't uh, cause a lot of damage to the body. I agree with that part. What I mean is that I've gotten to the point where I feel like I'm overdoing it. So then I go to the gym and I do 30 minutes of, uh, you know, uh, bench and deadlift and I keep the intensity moderate and I just perfect my form and I leave. I don't do anything else. Um, and it, now here's what you want to do. You want to weigh all these things out because the big lifts, they cause the most damage, but they also cause the best results. The small lifts cause the least amount of damage, but they also cause the least amount of results. So you want to weigh all that out when you're trying to determine what you want to reduce or cut out uh, of your routine. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, here's another way to do this. Go to the gym, do the same routine. Here's my favorite way, by the way. Go to the gym, do the same routine, lower the intensity. That's my favorite way to handle overtraining is I don't even change my workout. I just go easy. It's the same workout at 50% intensity. Now I'm moving, full range of motion. I'm feeling the squeeze. I'm at half the intensity I normally am. I'm still doing all the same stuff. I tried out, try that out for a little while. Uh oh, still not enough. I still need to cut back a little more. Cool. Now I'm just gonna do same thing, low intensity, but big major lifts. Yeah, I would assume gym. there's a scale like of, of yeah. yeah, reducing like one thing at a time. So that makes sense in terms of intensity, and then maybe lowering the reps or like one of the other variables, and then you know addressing uh, which one uh, causes you the most fatigue, and you know to kind of like program accordingly. Don't you guys feel it's kind of obvious sometimes I, for it, you too? I feel like like when I to us, when I, I know what I'm feeling, right? You know? Like I know I know when I overreached on my yeah. deadlifts. I know when I overreached on my squat, and it's normally those things. You'll that, feel it in certain areas. Oh yeah, well I just know. I know because today. I decided to do eight sets and it was programmed for me to do four or five, but I was feeling it. Or uh-huh. today I was supposed to be training in the eight to 10 rep range, but man, I was feeling so good. I wanted to see what singles look like today. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's normally those fucking things that you do where you probably knew you were overreaching when you did it. And then you get the signs of the achy joints, the inflammation, the not recovering in time, like, or sitting, going backwards in weight. Like, I don't know. I feel like if you're truly, because I want to be careful there too, because like this, I don't want to scare people to think that they're all, because we did an episode on overtraining. So now everybody's like freaking out. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, oh shit, I was tired yesterday. Mind pump said I could be overtraining, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. okay, it's. You, the, Take a nap. Yeah. M- most people, you'll have multiple of those signals that we talked about if you're truly overtraining. So I, I don't want to stress everybody out and think that. And you probably have a pretty good indicator that you did because you probably did something out of the ordinary or you weren't following your fucking programming. Well, I think too, it's tough for your average person who doesn't have a whole lot of experience yet because they see a plan and they see like a a rep count and they see like, oh, well, other people should be doing this and they haven't really learned their body enough to get like pay attention to those signals that like, well, well, for me personally, actually, this is probably too much right now and I'm just going to adjust on the fly. Like that, that, that comes later with experience, but uh, to keep that in mind in, in terms of like not being so rigid with uh, whatever plan you have going into the gym, like it, it could be interrupted. Next question is from Rachel Beach. You always talk about the importance of relationships with food. Can you give an example of what a good relationship with food looks like versus a poor one? Well, I take the, my food to dinner. <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's an obvious, uh, you know, there's obvious poor relationships to food, uh, you know, when it becomes medically pathological, you know, anorexia, uh, bulimia, and, you know, those types of things. So that's the obvious ones. Um, but let's talk more just kind of general average person. I'll say this. Um, a good relationship with food is understanding all of food's total values, um, not feeling shameful um, when you're eating a particular way, um, not using food to medicate or numb yourself. Um, When you're you're in a position where you eat what you truly want, I'm going to make a little caveat here, okay? What you truly want after you understand the real total values of food. Most of us only choose, when we think of the foods we want, we only relate it to the foods that we enjoy the taste of or the experience of eating. So when I say, hey, eat the foods that you want, people are like, great, donuts, Twinkies. pizza, french fries, whatever. 
okay, no, that's that's limited. You're, that's a limited um, uh, experience. That means that you're only picking the foods that you want for their palatability. But there are other values that food provides you. Oftentimes, I will really, really want to eat vegetables. Uh, is it for the palatability? No. Um, I know it doesn't taste as good um, as other foods, but I really want it because my digestion's off. And I do this sometimes when we travel. We'll travel, and I won't eat very many vegetables, and I'll come home and be like, man, I want to eat some vegetables. Or maybe my energy's a little low, um, or my workouts, and I'll, so I'll know I really, really want some starches for the carbohydrates or whatnot. So a good relationship is it's a relaxed relationship. You know, it's like any other good relationship. It doesn't feel like it's this crazy stress um, all the time. Uh, again, you're not shameful. It's not, I can't. It's not, it's that I don't want to, or I want to. And it takes time and like any relationship. So I want to use the word relationship and apply that to everything. Relationships need constant work. So it's like, how do you have a good relationship with your spouse? You constantly work out it. It's something that it doesn't just happen and if you don't get one and then just leave it alone and it stays that way. It's something that you remind yourself of uh, always. Well, I'll, I'll say it even more simply than that. I, a good relationship with food is pretty simple what it looks like. It looks like somebody who's in good shape and good shape is a, a wide spectrum, not what Instagram considers good shape. Good shape uh, off of like health standards, which is a, a relatively decent uh, body fat percentage, and you don't have to track or really pay too much attention to your food. You and you're not stressing out. Yeah, about it, you don't right? think about it. You don't stress about it. You don't. You're not worried that you decided because we're out at a nice dinner tonight, the four of us, and I decide I want to have a glass of wine with our dinner and have the cream of spinach, and I'm not thinking about it. I just you know how to navigate around. Uh, when you make food choices that way and you know how to in incorporate your exercise. That's a really good relationship with, with food is that you don't really have to worry and stress and think about it too much and you're able to keep yourself in good shape. If you're way outside of good shape, uh, you probably don't have a good relationship with food. It's just a matter of how extreme that is. You know, if, you, if you're in bad shape, you don't have a good relationship yeah. with food. It's yeah. that simple. Yeah. You don't know how to regulate yourself on what your body needs. You you have just totally uh, disconnected from those signals and you overeat. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a fact. And then another poor relationship with food is somebody who's obsessed with it so much that they're constantly tracking, they're constantly thinking about it, and that's still a poor relationship with food. Now, I'm the one on the show that I think advocates for tracking the most. And I do think that's extremely important to learn and figure out what your body needs. But the ultimate goal is to move away from that and to be able to intuitively, intuitively eat and intuitively train. And that, to me, is what a, a really good relationship for, with food looks like. It's like, you're, you're, it's like imagine this. You're at a, a party and uh, they bring out the cookies. Somebody with a oh, relationship that with food that isn't great would be like, Oh, I can't eat those. No, no, no. I, I can't. I can't have a cookie. I can't eat it. Someone with a good relationship with food would say, um, "I don't want a cookie," or "I want a cookie." Now, a lot of people listening right now are thinking, "What do you mean? I always want a cookie." <laughs> okay, n that's and that's my point. You don't really always want a cookie. When we say I want a cookie or whatever, what we're saying is I want the taste and experience of that cookie. But when you Put the entire thing in context, okay? Um, when I eat a cookie, I don't feel too good. Uh, maybe I'm a little gluten intolerant. It gives me heartburn. Or maybe, you know, I'm training for a competition and it's not really going to benefit. <laughs> it's not really going to benefit me in terms of my competition or whatever. I'm still acknowledging that it tastes good. So if they ask me, hey, Sal, do you think this cookie is going to taste good? My answer is always going to be yes. But if they say, do you want this cookie, when I weigh all those things out, and this happens more naturally as you practice this, when I weigh all these things out, my answer is going to be either, yes, I want it, or no, I don't. And when I say no, I don't, it does not mean that I don't acknowledge that I'm going to enjoy the taste of that cookie or said food. And so this is a practice, and it takes time. And remember this, be empathetic to yourself because... The way you have learned to value food, if you're listening to this podcast right now and you're in any and you're in a developed country, the odds are that you developed your relationship with food based around its palatability and the experience 
or context or emotion. Those are all the things that you've developed your relationships with food. So, you know, I, I'm at the movies and I crave popcorn. That's context. Or I learn to eat these types of food when I get sad because they make me feel better. So that's emotion. Or I think of foods in terms of what's going to taste the best. That's mm. what that's that's how I value food. So that has to do with the the palatability or the experience. The heat, what is known as the hedonistic experience. But there's so many other things that food provides to us. And those are all fine, by the way. I'm not demonizing all of those. Those are, those are valid uh, values that food can provide us. I'll give you an example. If I'm, you know, like I'm one of my kid's birthday parties um, and, you know, we make a cake for my kid and I'm celebrating with my kids for their birthday, I'm going to have the cake for the experience, the context. Maybe there's an emotional component. I'm happy. My, my kid turned however old or whatever. I'm also going to enjoy the hedonistic value of that piece of cake. I'm also going to know that it doesn't benefit me physiologically. It's not good for my body. I'm probably not going to feel as good digestively or whatever, but it's okay. It's okay because I know all the context. Now let's say I'm at home. I'm by myself. I'm watching TV and uh, I'm like, man, I want to have a piece of cake. I'm, I'm craving the taste of a piece of cake. And I think, well, you know, there's, there's really no other value besides that, the taste of it. And I'm at watching TV at home alone. Mm. Uh, I really don't want a piece of cake. So that's the difference between the two. And be empathetic because it takes time to understand those things. I remember years ago I had a client that uh, – I've had several clients that didn't like to eat vegetables. And one of the ways that I got them to eat vegetables is I would – first I'd talk them into having very, very small portions. But then I would have them journal and track how they felt before, during, and after, and then how they felt the next day. And what ended up happening with a lot of them is that over time – they started to notice things like my digestion's better, I feel better. Oh, I don't like the taste, but oh man, I start to feel really good. My skin's looking better. And then over time, because they became aware of all these other values besides the the the, the taste of it, they actually started to want to eat the vegetables. And so this is people talk about balance with nutrition. This is what balance looks like. So every once in a while or whatever, you eat the pizza and the, and the cake or whatever. And, and other times you eat all the stuff that's good for you physiologically. I think it was Confucius, but uh, it was uh, one must go through the cookie to transcend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he said that, bro. That's some, some wisdom. Yeah. That's some wisdom. I'll leave you with that. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They cost zero. We got a ton of them for you. It's basically free information to help you with your fitness goals. And there's a lot of stuff there. You can also find all of us on Instagram. We have our own personal pages with their own personal flavor. Justin's is cheesy. You can yeah, find very... him at <laughs> Mind Pump Justin. It's cheddar-like. <laughs> Adam's is a little salty. You can find it at Mind Pump <laughs> Adam. Ain't that salty nuts. And salty mine's nuts. a nice balance between the two. You find me at Mind Pump Sal.